chapter 48 is North and South. Uh, so Margaret is in London. Um, these dinners were delightful, but even here Margaret's dissatisfaction found her out. Every talent, every feeling, every acquirement, nay, even every tendency towards virtue, notice the uh, anathema there, was used up as materials for fireworks. The hidden sacred fire <clears throat> exhausted itself in sparkle and crackle. Uh, so she's talking there, Gaskell's talking there about Margaret's feelings that... Um, all the talents and feelings and acquirements, all the um, virtue, everything that, that these people, these uh, fashionable people who come to Edith's dinner parties, every uh, talent and useful kind of, uh, yeah, every talent that they have in their life is just used for display, just used as display, like firework exhausted itself in sparkle and crackle, lovely onomatopoeic words there, um, rather than being used for some deeper meaningful purpose, the hidden sacred fire. Um, so here again we see Margaret's feeling that um, life in London is a bit pointless and meaningless, that no one's really doing anything worthwhile. Uh, and of course, this is a contrast with Milton, where she feels like people are doing things that are worthwhile. So her prejudice, her initial prejudice against the North has become almost a prejudice against the South in a way. Okay, coming through that chapter into chapter 49, uh, Mr. Bell has died and left, <coughs> left Margaret his entire fortune which is um, a bit of what they call a deus ex machina, which means a um, convenient plot device um, to make Margaret an heiress and thus solve a bunch of problems at the end of the novel. Plot problems. Okay, uh, when they returned to town from a seaside holiday, Margaret fulfilled one of her seaside resolves and took her life into her own hands. <clears throat> Before they went to Cromer, which was the seaside resort, she had been as docile to her aunt's laws as if she were still the scared little stranger who cried herself to sleep that first night in the Harley Street nursery. But she had learnt in those solemn hours of thought that she herself must one day answer for her own life and what she had done with it. And she tried to settle that most difficult problem for women. How much was to be utterly merged in obedience to authority and how much might be set apart for freedom in working. So here again we see um, Margaret uh, dealing with, I guess, something that was called in the Victorian era the woman question. Uh, in other words, what, what are we to do with the talents and the intelligence of women. Must they simply obey authority? How much might be set apart for freedom? She wants to work. By work, I don't mean have an actual paid job. I mean do sort of um, good work, social works uh, in London and to help the poor of London. Um, so here again we see this idea which is quite a motif through the novel of course uh, how much do we owe to authority how much should we obey authority and how much should we be free to follow um, our own conscience and also our own ideas of, of what what we owe to our conscience and it Gaskell's making it a matter of conscience that she herself must one day answer for her own life and what she had done with it. Answer to whom? Well, to God, you know. Um, and, of course, Gaskell was a Unitarian and they believed very much in uh, women being useful in society. She doesn't feel useful at the moment. She just feels ornamental 
decorative. Um, and that's what she does. So Margaret gained the acknowledgement of her right. See, so Gaskell believes it is her right to follow her own ideas of duty. And that's very strong through the novel as well, this idea that um, duty is not just what other people say your duty is. Uh, your duty should be dictated by your conscience. And we see that in Margaret, we see it in her father, and we see it also in Frederick, that uh, Gaskell privileges this idea of following what you believe is right um, and not necessarily what people around you think is right or respectable. Um, so the importance of conscience as opposed to just mere respectability. And that's all I've got to say for 45 and 46.